This tutorial is about branching code in MATLAB. Branches allow you to make a decision in your code based on the current condition of the program. For example, suppose the following discount scheme at a store. If you buy five or fewer items, the price is $5 per item. If you buy between 6 and 10 items, the price is $4 per item. And if you buy more than 10, you pay $3 per item. If you wanted to write a program to calculate the total price of a purchase, where the cashier has to simply enter the number of items purchased, you would have to use branches, since the price depends on the input of the cashier. We will now explore how to write such code. The general form of branches uses an if statement, else if statements, and else statements. So the way this looks is like this. We have if logical expression 1. If this is true, we're going to execute code 1. So it's going to be a block of code in the place of code 1 here. Else if logical expression 2 will execute a different block of code, code 2. We can keep going with these else if statements and have as many logical expressions as we want and we'll execute a different piece of code depending on which one is true. And then to encapsulate every other possibility we can have an else statement without any logical condition and this will execute another piece of code, code 4. This will only happen if every preceding logical expression is false. We close this entire block with an end statement, and afterwards we can have more code. So this is again just the general form of an if-else statement, not actual code, since I haven't actually written any logical expressions or code. So the way that this works is that if the first logical expression is true, then this code will get executed, this block of code, code 1. And then the if statement will exit and go to the end and continue with more code. If the first logical expression is instead false, then we'll go to the else if statement and check this logical expression, the second one. If that one is true, we'll execute code 2 and then exit to the end and then do more code. And this goes through just like that. If the first one is false, it'll check the second. If the second is false, it'll check the third. If the third is false, it'll go to the else statement and execute that code. So one piece of code in this block is going to get executed every time, since we have this else statement to capture everything not making the previous logical expressions true. So here is an easy example to show actual logical expressions and values in a piece of code. So I'll comment this out because it's not actual code and let's write a piece of code down here that will actually be able to be executed. We'll start off with a equals 10 and we'll say if a is less than 1 then we'll assign b equals 1. Else if a is less than 11 we'll say b equals 2. Else if a is less than 20, b equals 3. Else, b equals 4. So in this case, when we run this code, I'll hit run, we see that if we check what b is, b is equal to 2. b is equal to 2 because it goes through this first condition. It checks, is a le less than 1? Well, since a is 10, the answer is no. So it goes to the next one. It checks, is a less than 11? It is. So it executes b equals 2 and exits. Even though a is also less than 20, this condition is never evaluated because the previous one was true and that was the one that was evaluated. As an alternate example, suppose that I had instead typed the following. And again, I'll comment this out so it doesn't get executed. And let's look at the following. Suppose instead I have, again, a equals 10. 
if a is less than 1, b equals 1. Then I'll close this. I will not use an if else statement. I'll make an altogether new if statement. If a is less than 11, b equals 2. If a is less than 20, b equals 3. And that's it. So if I run this code, I get that b is now equal to 3 instead of the 2 that it was equal to before. And you can see the difference between these two pieces of code. In the first one, I have else if statements, which check a given condition, and if it's true, it'll exit before even looking at the rest of them. But in this case, since these are all separate if statements, it goes to each one. It checks, is a less than 1? No. So it skips this piece of code, goes to the end. Is a less than 11? Yes. So it assigns b equals 2. But then it gets to the next if statement, and it sees that a is less than 20, so it assigns b equals to 3 and overwrites the previous value. In addition to what we just saw, we can also have compound conditions. Remember that in the first example over here, in this explanation, these are just logical expressions. These logical expressions can be anything. So we can actually have compound conditions and more complicated logical expressions than just simple relational operators like we've had here before. So for example, let's say we have a equals 2 b equals 1, and we can check if a equal 2 and b equals 2, then we'll say that c equals 1. Else if a equal 2 and b equal 1, c equals 2, else let's say c equals 3. And by the way, the else statement is optional. As you saw in the previous example, for example here, there is no else statement, and it still works fine. The problem with not having an else statement is that sometimes you might not execute any code in the if statement if the conditions preceding are not true. But anyway, getting back to this, we have this kind of statement, and if I run this code, we get that C is equal to 2, which makes sense. Because we go through this one, we check, is a equal to 2 and b equal to 2? No. So this statement gets skipped. The next one gets evaluated. Is a equal to 2 and b equal to 1? Yes. So c equals 2, and we exit the loop and go to the end. A better way to check compound conditions is to use the short circuit AND and OR operators. The short circuit AND and OR operators will evaluate the, each of these conditions in turn, and if one of them already determines the full evaluation, it doesn't even evaluate the second. For example, if I put a short circuit AND denoted by two ampersands here, and let's do that over here as well, it'll check the first condition, A equal to two, in this case, it's true, and therefore it'll evaluate the second one as well. With an AND statement, if the first statement, if any of the statements are equal to false, then the whole expression will equal false, and there's no reason to evaluate any further. With an OR, denoted by two vertical lines as opposed to one for the usual OR, if any of the statements are true, then the entire expression must be true, and therefore there's no need to evaluate the rest. In this case, it makes no difference. Since A is equal to true, therefore the second one has to be evaluated, since the total value of this AND operation depends on the second value. If that one's equal to 0, the whole thing is 0. If it's equal to 1, then the whole thing is 1. But in general, the short circuit operators are a good idea to use. But they are only valid for scalar expressions, scalar logical expressions. That is, if this evaluated to a vector of logicals, then this operator would no longer be valid.
One more concept I would like to mention is that of nested branches. A nested branching structure is made up of branches within branches. And this can take the place of compound conditions. So for example, let's say again we have a equals 2, b equals 1, and we'll say this time around, if a equals 2, and then we'll put another if statement inside of this, since the condition if a equals 2 is the same for both b equals 2 and b equals 1. So we'll say if b equals 2, then c equals 1, else if b equals 1, then c over here has to be double equals c equals 2 else c equals 3 and we can close that and just for completeness we'll say else in the outer loop I mean in the outer branch we'll say else c equals 3 and we'll end that so this will do the same thing as before. It'll check if a is equal to 2, it'll do all of this. However, if a is not equal to 2, it will assign c equals 3. Just like over here, when we check if a is equal to 2 and some condition on b, else if a equal 2 and some condition on b, if a is not equal to 2, it'll set c equal to 3. So that's this outer if statement, if else statement. Then the inner one, if a is equal to 2, will check the conditions of b and assign c appropriately, just like in the example before. One important thing to point out is you may have noticed that I accidentally placed a single equal sign when I was checking the condition of b equal to 1. Keep in mind that 1 equal sign is an assignment operator, whereas 2 is an equality check. It's very important to keep those two straight because otherwise you're going to get errors in your program. So overall, branches are really, really useful in all programming languages because they allow you to make decisions in your code based on the conditions of the current program. These are really important to keep in mind and to learn the syntax of properly, and you will find many uses of these in your programs.